In this video, I'm going to discuss with you some of the most common causes of the unwanted bounce in your bow. I've struggled with this issue even into my professional career, and it was really embarrassing to not have <laughs> uh, control over the bounce of a bow, especially in a quiet passage. My bow is sitting there bouncing. So I did a lot of research and a lot of uh, detective work, I guess, just analyzing when the bow bounced, what was going on when it happened, and I'm going to share with you some of the most common causes, and we're going to have a little bit of a, a complicated discussion on the final cause that I think is the real culprit in this problem. So let's get rid of the easy, easy causes first, because that might be the only thing that you need to hear. First of all, if your bow is crooked, this way or that way, it's you're going to lose solid contact with your string and it can cause your bow to bounce when you change, especially when you go to a down bow. It's going to make it extra bad. <clears throat> Another thing is how tight your bow is. If your bow is too tight, your bow is going to be just a, a tight spring. It's going to be tightly coiled and every move you make is going to be um, exaggerated and it, your bow is just going to want to jump like a jumping bean. If your bow is too loose, you're going to have kind of a squishy bounce, but a bounce nonetheless. Um, I don't think I need to say any more about that. The general rule of thumb for how tight your, your bow should be, this isn't a number two pencil, but it's about the same width. It's a little fatter. But you know the yellow, the old yellow number two pencils that no one uses anymore? The general rule is for that to be able to pass through the entire length and to just make contact with the horsehair and this, the bow at, this, at the narrowest place. Okay, but it, this is probably a little bit, I could be a little tighter, my bow could be a little tighter. I like my bow kind of loose but um, it shouldn't pass through without without touching both the hair and the stick. If it is, your bow is way too tight. And if you're able to let go of the bow, of the pencil like that, you may be too loose, but you may not be. Because like myself, I like my bow a little looser than some people. Okay, so that's your bow tightness. Uh, another thing um, is which highway, which lane of your sounding point you're choosing to play in. These lanes over here closer to the bridge, they are tighter and springier and they are going to tend to bounce your bow a lot more. Out here it's spongier and softer and squishier and it's going to absorb some of the bounciness. So. Um, it could be just which lane of your sounding point you're playing in. Sometimes you've got to be in a certain lane and you don't have much choice. So that's not really a cure, but it's, it's helpful to realize that that's what's causing it, and then you can work on a cure. Um, another thing that can cause your bow to bounce is this kind of a holding your bow like this with your pinky um, being rigid and straight. I can't do it on purpose, but um, that is a big cause for bouncing bow, especially on a down bow. And that's because the weight distribution is not being distributed at all. All of the weight is on your pinky, and your pinky is rigid. As And see how low my elbow is? You know, a lot of people play that way, and I'm not going to say that's wrong. I'm just going to say that can contribute to the bouncing, the unwanted bouncing bow. So if you were to raise your elbow up slightly and get that pinky curve, it's going to give you a shock absorber. So that, so that you can ease into that down bow a little bit. Okay, now, using that shock absorber, or the collet motion, everyone knows what the collet motion is. It's what gives professionals their smooth bow changes. If you are using too much collet motion, that can actually cause your bow to flop. Um, like... I'm 
I can't do it on purpose, but if you are just flopping your collet motion all over the place, that's going to jump start that bounce that you don't want. You want to use the minimum amount of collet that you need. Don't ever use more than you need to accomplish a certain task. A lot of intermediate players try to use tons of collet thinking more is better but it, it's actually not. So check out your collet. Maybe you're doing a little too much collet. Now the final, the final thing that was really the key to solving my problem is the balance point in your bow and that is just simply basically the spot where you can balance your bow on your finger and it stays put. You know, it's roughly, roughly here. Let me back up. It's roughly here, but it can be anywhere in this zone is the danger zone for bow changes. Because depending on your arm weight, what string you're on, and the angle that you are approaching that string can make your bow jump. So just keep in mind that's your danger zone and you need to focus really hard and when you're changing your bow in this area you need to handle it with your utmost concentration with your best gentlest collet with your elbow balanced with your pinky bent and let me just demonstrate something to you this is the hard thing to explain this is my music stand with tons of music on it um, let me straighten it out just a little Okay, let's pretend this is our violin string. And you can see my stand is on a little bit of an angle. So we can approach the string perfectly perpendicular. That's perpendicular. That's not perpendicular. That's not perpendicular. This is perpendicular. The safest way to approach your string, your bow changes, in the danger zone, remember the danger zone is in this area between here and here. If you're changing, changing bows in that danger zone, you're safest if you're perpendicular. If you, if you are approaching the string, you see that? Especially if you just change to a lower string. Oh man, now it's not going to do it for me. There we go. If you're just going to a lower string and you're going to approach it from uphill, not perpendicular, then you're going to increase your chances hugely of getting a bounce. I guess this is fairly safe being on the other side of perpendicular, but even it is making my bow jump. Being perfectly perpendicular uses my arm weight and my good bow hand technique to distribute the weight and to not make my bow jump. So that's huge. Watch whether you're being perpendicular on the string or if you're in the habit of crossing your string too far so that then you're doing an up, uphill bow stroke that's going to make your bow jump. Every time you change on that in that danger zone it's going to cause your bow to jump and that's going to be increased and magnified if your bow is too tight or if you're in one of the closer sounding point lanes closer to the bridge. So I think this is the real key and then I want to share with you an exercise that someone on violinist.com um, posted and I didn't try it but it people were like wow this is really cool this works so I'm going to move the camera down because this is really wacky. The uh, person said, stand upside down <laughs> and play. Ah, it's not easy. is it reverses gravity. That's what I've decided it does. <laughs> and it causes your bow hand to instinctively figure out how to play 
keeping the bow in contact with the string. And everyone who tried it said that when they played right side up again, it was better. So I think it's worth mentioning that exercise along with my perpendicular concept, the bow being perpendicular to the string and not at an off angle to it. So I hope that was helpful. If any of you have a unique insight into this problem, please share it because I'm still looking for the absolute key to this issue. These things that I've given you will help, but please share if you have some other tips for us.